Hey Eurovision fans, we have the 12 songs for the final of MESC, that's Malta's national final. We're going to listen and react to all 12 of the live performances and see are there any that could get Malta their first win ever in Eurovision. So uh, let's kick it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that I was covering the Maltese semi-finals as I was happening there, but I haven't actually done like a proper video where I look at all the songs that made it through to the final. And the final's happening this weekend, so I'm kind of running out of time, so what better time to do it than now? We're going to look at all 12 of the live performances. I'm aware that some of the songs have music videos, but not all of them have it, so in order to keep like an even playing field, I'm just going to focus on the live performances that we saw on show, I think is how you pronounce it, X-O-W. I'm expecting or hoping that we're going to get a big glow up with the final, that it'll be like in a proper studio and we'll have like proper LEDs and dancers and everything. This is kind of like a little bit more lower budget, which I totally get. So I'm expecting a lot of elevation and improvement since then, but we're going to just watch this for now. I've seen most of these songs before. I missed one of the semi-finals, so I've never seen Mara before. I'm pretty confident I won't have to deal with any copyright, but if I do, you can watch the original audio up on my Patreon. So the first group that we're going to is Urba, and they're saying Sirena, which I'm guessing is Siren in Maltese. Wanna know my secret bank? I think I remember this one. Ooh, lovely beginning. Oh yes, this is the Mario 64 song, when he's in Egyptian land. Okay, vocals are sounding pretty good there. Oh yeah, that's got a nice beat to it. Kinda nice to have a girl group as well, like have Malta ever sent a girl group before? Girl groups in general are pretty rare in Eurovision. I remember Ogene, um, Serbia. That's a nice bridge. Yeah, like this is a, this is a good, well-constructed song. That little snake charming thing is so unnecessary, but I love it. And just the fact it's in Maltese, I think is really interesting. It's a pretty language. A couple of laz, why not? Just throw it in, laz. It's uni laz are universal. Yeah, like it's got kind of like a slight basic pop song vibe, but it's fun and their energy kind of is kind of low, but I imagine on the main stage, their energy will be bigger. And they'll have like cooler costumes and maybe two male dancers kind of looking sexy. Yeah, lyrically, there's nothing. We don't expect deep lyrics from Malta, which is why using Maltese is good. But yeah, it's got a catchy chorus. Like, this is this has got something to it. The energy is just a bit too low now. It's a, a little bit sleepy performance. It looks like they all gave him one tranquilizer before they went on stage. So we just need more energy, more vivacity. Oh, yeah, don't look at the floor when you're moving through your marks. That's... Yeah, they'll, they'll get better. They've been practicing. It, it's waiting for the bus. <laughs> this is waiting for the bus vibes right now. Okay, nice little bit of a guitar into the bridge for the final course. Are they going to do a key change? I can't remember. I like that song though. It's got a nice summery feel. Okay, that was a pretty decent note. I don't feel like the vocal mixing in this show in general was particularly um, favorable for most people, so they actually do sound pretty good. Ooh, lovely bit of a worn horn at the end. Yeah, I actually think that's kind of a cute entry. I like that it's a Maltese, I like the girl group vibe. The song is kind of basic, but it's catchy enough. They just need to bring the energy. They need to bring the costumes, they need to bring the fun. They need to bring a little bit of a translation about what the song is about because I have absolutely no idea. Like if it's a song about sirens, Give me like full on siren fantasy. Give me flowy robes. Give me men who are like hypnotized by your spell. Don't give me four ladies standing in, kind of like waiting to get into the club. So just elevation, elevation is gonna make this better. Okay, who do I put next? Okay, next we've got Gail Attard and she's saying wild card one and number secret pan. That sounds like the start of Tout l'univers, that piano note. Like I said, this show was very um, <laughs> harsh. Anyone who couldn't sing, it really showed them up. So she is good vocally. 
giving me some mini bombed vibes. Okay, bit of sass in the bridge. I don't know if those backup singers are improving the song. I feel like they're taking attention away from her. Oh, I missed the chorus. Yeah, this is already giving me non-qualification vibes. Um, I just don't see this getting through a Tammy Red only semi-final. And I really want Malta to qualify, like really badly. It is very stripped back studio as well. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, she means business. Okay, so very vocally strong. But there's no juries. Jury note won't win you through a Tally only semi-final. But you know, maybe she can bring a story when she's on the stage. Like, why not? She's just standing there on her own, as many of the artists are. And she's bringing energy now, good intensity. Yeah, she's very, very strong vocally. She's got a really strong bass to come from. I like her big notes as well. There's a slight rawness in them. Yeah, she's, she's very impressive. I always thought that Maltes had great singers. Oh, okay, a tiny bit off there, but yeah, she can improve. It, it, the lyrics are just a tool to show off her voice, really, which is spectacular. Yeah, look, they weren't kind of allowed to do any staging stuff. It was like they're kind of just in this lounge on their own. I think they're allowed to bring a couple of dancers. Actually, did anyone have dancers? I don't think so, but she's got to bring a staging concept. And if she does, maybe this could do a little bit better and maybe... I don't know, I still kind of can't see it qualifying unless they like really elevate with the staging and there's some sort of a story. I don't know, wild card. I didn't even hear her say wild card. Obviously I'm talking over the song, but like I still couldn't pick her out saying wild card during the whole thing. Okay, third up we have Greta Tood singing Topic, blah, blah. And I believe that, oh, sorry. I believe that Greta's actually pretty active on social media. They're a big Eurovision fan. Want to know my secret fan? I do remember this song. Oh. The book, I love it. So drag race, I love it. Really fun, very quirky. Actually quite a good voice as well. And just great energy, this confidence, this poise. If you compare that to the girl group that we had, they're lacking that kind of real... Oh. I don't know if I like that blah 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 blah. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a little bit trashy in the chorus, but I think they're a very lovable person. There's a lot of charisma here. The verses are much better than the chorus, and the lyrics are fun and they're interesting, which is unusual for Malta to have interesting lyrics. And even though the song isn't about much, at least it's personal. It's some. It's the story of this person. Just talking about how people are bitching about her. I love it. I think, that's a that's a fun, cute thing to sing about. That blah 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 thing that I can is not very aesthetically pleasing to listen to. Oh yeah, I'm into this bridge. This is going to look really fun on the stage because there's going to be people around. And actually, she's pulling off really well on her own. Oh, oh, dance break. This is like total commitment. And it's very hard to do if you're the only person on the stage on your own. You have to have a lot of self-belief. That is not a bad jury note. Okay, the end of it wasn't great. I just want this revamped. Put them with a really good producer, revamp it. There's a lot of things that I like. There's attitude, there's sass, there's personality. It's just got something. It's got a, a point of view. It's it's a person. It's uh, There's a story. I like the character. I like getting to know this, who this person is. It's just much better than all these kind of like very bland, awful, generic lyric songs with a big, beautiful voice. I'm sorry, I'm not picking on Wildcard, but like, you know, there's, there's lots of other songs that are like that. I, I'm not saying that's gonna qualify. I'm not saying that's gonna do well, but I do think that personableness that people watching go oh this is like fun I'm enjoying this it's entertaining getting to know a new person you feel like their friend I think that's got appeal 
needs to be cleaned up big time the song needs a revamp really really great performer and to be able to go on stage and do something like that and have total commitment you can see that they're experienced and they've done this a lot in clubs and bars and being in the role where they have to entertain people who are around them next up we have Haley, and she's saying tell me that it's over want to know my secret fan i think we're going into another sad lady i personally don't think malta can qualify with ballads i just can't see it happening but let's hear her out. I wonder if this is gonna be like in the breathlessly genre of songs. Okay. I'm looking for one original lyric that is not. Where's the story? So, Relationship Troubles, that's the song. Great. Vocally, she's good. I don't think she's as strong as the second lady. Wildcard Lady was stronger vocally. I want to make like a list of all the forbidden lyrics and when you say them you're immediately disqualified from Eurovision. I'll say it to you now, this would not qualify. One million percent would not qualify. It's very generic, it's very X Factor winner song, not even a good X Factor winner song. It's just too boring. It's too boring a song. And she's singing it very well, very prettily, it doesn't matter, the song is boring. It feels like a vocal exercise. It's like, this is how well I can sing. I, it's, it's bordering on shouty as well. Whereas I felt like the second lady wasn't shouty, she, that, she managed to control it that it felt. Please tell me this is over. I'm ready for this to be over. Yeah, I, I feel like she's just, there's gonna be obvious comparisons between her and Gail. So I might've felt like I was being a little bit harsh there, but yeah, like that's, this is that's not what Malta needs. Malta does not need very generic ballads about relationship issues. They need something with a little bit more originality. Okay, I've changed the running order because I don't want another sad lady song. So we're going to Miriana Conte sing Venom. Want to know my secret band? I'm guessing from the title Venom that this is going to have a little bit more of a tempo. Yeah, nice sinister start. Ooh, she said drip and there's water sounds. Nice. I think they multi stars just need to sing a Maltese more because they're not doing anything with the lyrics. Just sing a Maltese, it's so pretty. And then we have no idea what you're saying. Doing a little bit of a rap there, that's a cool mix up. We need to ban this. No more crowns. It's been done 50 times. Let's retire it. Hmm. Okay, she's mixing it up. A little bit of a like drum and beat, drum and bass beat coming in. And she's got a lot of sass and spunk in her vocal. Yeah, the song's a little bit messy. I like that she's bringing something original. She's um, kind of thinking outside the box in terms of Malta song festival formulaic songs. Good attitude. Vocally, I don't know if it's as, like wow as Gail was. I think Gail is still the vocal winner so far. This is an absolute 100% unqualifier. I don't even know how she can elevate this to staging though. But I still, I still like that it's something different. I like the variation it brings to the final. But like this sounds kind of strange to me. It's something I haven't heard before. Oh. Oh, I kind of like that actually. And Venom is a cool title for a song as well. We had that last year with Ali. Okay, some of the ad-libs at the end, not perfect. She's into it though, she's really feeling it. Her, vote, her singing style sounds very American, very American Idol. Okay, but just yeah, don't send that to the final because it's not going to do anything. Next up we have Lisa Gaichi and she's saying breathe, want to know my secret brain. So she's saying Tom, slow down, breathe, listen to the music, enjoy yourself with another female ballad. The ladies in Malta are not happy, they're sad. What are the men in Malta doing to them? Nice voice. Outfit's kind of giving me office chic. Oh, and it's giving me bathrobe office chic. Yeah, we're into Maltese female generic ballad territory again. Vocally strong, not enough though. The song is, mm -mm. that song is not strong enough. This is in the same bundle as Gail and Haley. Um, and I think Gail still wins. 
It's hard to keep comparing them, but really, like, we've got three female ballad songs. There's a huge overlap there. Comparisons will be made. Okay, that was vocally impressive. Yeah, the song's just not good enough. I don't, I don't have nothing else left to say, I don't think. Yeah, again, this feels like a vocal exercise. Into a standard bridge. It's just, it's just too standard to construction. It's very formulaic. I'm, I'm, sh I'm shocked this song hasn't been released before. It sounds like it's been done 50,000 times already. I'm dying for this to be over. I'm dying for this. This is just... If this went a Eurovision, everyone would go to the toilet. It is 100% a toilet break song. So I know it seems I'm being harsh, but I'm just trying to be realistic with you here. Like, that, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to tell you that that song's going to qualify, that that's a very interesting song. It just isn't, like... I think, I think that's almost objectively the reality of it. Okay, now, we are going to something a little bit more interesting now, and that is Matt Black singing Banana. I have seen this already, so I'm probably not going to be as gaspy. It's been two months, though, so actually maybe I might get a couple of gasps. There's a bit with a banana in the song. Want to know my secret plan? I have a soft spot for, for Matt Black. I think he's brilliant. The outfit needs to work. He's had a lot of time. It's a fun start though, it feels like it's the start of a party. It's Matt Black. And say it's Matt Black, so iconic. We're looking, can Walter qualify? He's got great charisma, confidence. And imagine now on the back string, big bananas, lots of colors and palm trees and beaches. And the song is actually, it's pretty catchy. Short or curvy, I don't care, yes. Who else is talking about penises at Eurovision? You can come from anywhere. <laughs> I think this is written by Sean Banat Copacabana from Sweden. You and your papa. Oh, dirty. He needs a big dance now. This post chorus is so fun. He looks a little bit drunk, but <laughs> we can work on that. The, the drama, he needs a more slick looking dance routine there. He needs to work with the top choreographer. But this is so fun. This is like, it's entertainment. His styling is cool, I love his hair. I like the glasses. The, the showing the knees thing, I think, throw that in the bin, get something new. Oh, now the mama's coming for the banana. Okay, the whole family's eating bananas. Okay, getting the potassium. This is the fun bit. And we need a dance routine now, that everyone can do. The camera's getting a little bit zany as well, going in and out. I think it's brilliant. I think he's gonna eat a banana now, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Where does the banana even come from? I actually quite like this breakdown. This instrumental. Where is the banana? Where is he taking that from? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is like one of the most iconic things in Eurovision ever. He does waste a lot of it, but still... <laughs> There's no way people aren't gonna love this. It's just... It's so fun. And I feel like this is Maltese humour. It feels like a different type of humour. Oh, it's just... He's so iconic. Oh, and the would would then stop it. Okay, look, I know people absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> this, but it's fun. Like I'm gonna take my head because I might do a little bit of a big spiel about this. It's really fun. Look, I'm not saying that this is definitely gonna qualify, but I think it would have a shot, especially if it gets a little bit lucky with the running order. If it gets put between some serious songs, and then you have this like song, which is really fun, innuendo, suggestive about eating banana. Like the bit where he sits down and eats the banana. That is just <laughs> hilarious. It's just brilliant. It's so outrageous. It's so over the top. We've never seen it before. Imagine the backdrop of the LEDs, having all these big bananas bouncing in and out. You know, he talks about short and curvy and then all the mamas and the papas coming and eat the bananas. It's just vivacious, it's wild, it's crazy. It makes me laugh. I'd already seen that before and I was still laughing. And at my, the first time I saw it, I was like <laughs> properly <laughs> freaking out. I think he even posted about it on Twitter. So like, I think this is really fun. I know Malta sent a really fun song last year and it didn't work. I think they were a little bit unlucky that they got a bad running order and they were in the harder semi-final in the first half so there was a lot of bad luck involved in that as well. I think if that had been in the second half of the second semi-final I think it probably could have qualified. I thought it actually ended up being a really cool performance 
a lot of people liked it. You know, I think Malta needs to develop their identity, like who are they in Eurovision? This kind of like female ballad thing that they did to get their two second place finishes, that era is over. I don't think they can do these super generic, big, belting voice female ballads and expect that they're gonna come second again. It's just not gonna happen. They need to be thinking forward. They need to be bringing something new. What is Malta's identity? Who are they? What do their songs look and feel like? I'm not saying they all have to look like this, but this, this for me somehow just feels Maltese. I don't know, Matt Black for me is giving me a sense of what are Maltese people? What's their humor? What do they think of? I don't know. I just feel like this has an identity that kind of feels a bit special and I think this would be a really fun entry for Malta. Again, I'm not saying it will qualify, but I think that people would talk about it and Malta would be on the map and people would be excited and I think it would make a lot of people smile and go, oh wow, Malta's so fun. I think that's better than, oh wow, Malta's sending a really boring female ballad, I'm gonna go to the toilet. It's a risk, but I think it's a fun, exciting risk and I think he's gonna elevate really when we get to the live stage. I wanna see five dancers dressed as bananas. I wanna see five, six people eating bananas on the stage. I just think it's, I think he's so lovable. I get behind him, I wanna support him, I wanna give him a hug. And it's entertainment, at the end of the day, Eurovision is an entertainment show. But a lot of people are gonna hate on this. They think it's too goofy or humor, or it's a joke entry. Next up, we've got Nathan, and he's talking about the ghost. Wanna know my secret back? I don't remember this one, I don't think. Wow, Nathan's come straight off the street. No styling for him. Yeah, just t-shirt and t-shirt and jeans. Okay, nice to have a male ballad though, it's just a little bit of a mix up. I think we have some male ballads coming out later though as well. That little flute is giving me a little bit of ghost vibes, so that's kind of cool. And we've got a spacey sounding electronic beat as well. Um, mm, kind of rappy pre chorus. Is that the pop up? I just don't think Malta can do ballads. I just think they all sound the same. It's like one word long, da 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 long, da da. It's just, they're very repetitive. There's a structure that is written in Maltese ballads and I don't know. Is there any precedent for it working in the last 10 years? I do kind of like this lyrics a little bit different. He's saying like people are ignoring him, he's becoming invisible. That does feel kind of a bit new. I don't know if it's like an attention seeker song, but this styling is just not giving me ghosts. Um, it's giving me going to the shop chic. Well, not even chic, it's just giving me going to the shops. He's got pretty good energy on stage though, pretty good commitment. The new challenge for Malta next year, have no songs where someone has a single word that they do a long note on. <clears throat> next up, I'm actually kind of excited because this is the hypiest new word song that I haven't seen yet. It's Denise saying Mara. I believe it might be in Maltese, Mara. It is. So Mara means a woman. And actually, fun fact, in Swahili, it means times. <laughs> so I presume she's going for the Maltese translation. Denise Mara won on my secret bank. Okay, this is exciting. This is the first time I've ever heard this song. Oh, why is the room empty? Everyone leave? Maybe she was the first performer. So we're getting a little bit of a bop, maybe? Oh, there are people now. Ooh, okay. I like where she's going with this so far. It seems kind of interesting. Pop drop. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Kiss my tiara. <laughs> Mara, Mara, Mara. Come and kiss my chair. Okay, that's kind of fun. So Mara, woman, 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 come kiss my chair. So it's like a female empowerment song. So she's part Jennifer, part, I wonder if she means Jennifer Lopez and Cleopatra. Yeah, I like it. I feel like the energy is, I want the energy to be even bigger. I feel like it's kind of like turned down a little bit. You're about to bang down, 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 okay. I wish there was a little bit more variation in the lyrics in the chorus. That tiara line's cool, but... Oh. Oh. She's pop dropping. 
She's dance breaking. Oh, this is the most unenergetic dance break we've ever seen in the history of the world. <laughs> She's giving us nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even one cent. Yeah, that dance break needs to be more of a more energetic. The attitude's fun though. That that kiss my terror line is good, but I wonder does she overuse it? But I like this I like the spirit of the song. I like the attitude. I like this like female empowerment. I'm a badass bitch. Come and kiss my tiara. So staging wise that could be really cool. I'm looking forward to who can elevate. I want someone to elevate on Saturday. Really bring an incredible fun stage show. Make it look like a complete package ready to go to Eurovision. But overall I thought that was cool. I had cool elements. I wish the production had like the volume turned up around five decibels and I wanted more energy on the stage and that dance break. Put it in the bin, start again with five times more energy, please. Okay, next up we got Ryan Hilly saying Karma won a number secret bang. And I'm guessing we're getting the male version of a generic female ballad now. Who knows, he could surprise me, but Karma, mm. So what's the point? Okay, vocals a little bit, um, they sound fine. His P's are coming out very p, p. Yeah, lyrics are 0 out of 10, but let's see about the melody and his vocals. I got my fingers crossed, okay. Okay, he's added a beat now, okay, that's good. Got a little bit of development of the song. He sounded better in the chorus there, vocally, than he did in the verse. Lyrically, it's a collection of cliches from the 80s and 90s. I wonder if he's going to go for some big notes at the end. I think he's a very strong singer. He came second last year, didn't he? I think this has more of a melody than the other ballads. Like, of all the ballads so far, this has the most discernible melody, the catchiest melody. I'm not saying it'll qualify, but I think it wins the ballads. I can see this in Melfest 15, 20 years ago. Karma take control, okay. Okay, this now, something visually is happening here, this kind of like slower bit. Okay, his falsetto there is quite nice. Oh, got a little bit weak there towards the end. Oh, he's gone in for another one. Why not? Go for a second chance. And that was a bit better. Okay, his ad libs are kind of good. I think he needs to work on this a bit more because I would expect him to have some really strong ad libs at the end. Yeah, look, that 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 wins the ballads for me. I think that's our fifth ballad we've had so far. Multi's ballads are just not interesting. They're not lyrically interesting and, and melodically they sound like Swedish songs from 10, 15 years ago. That's just the reality. No one is writing new, fresh, modern ballads in Malta. I would love them to. I think maybe they can in the future, but at this point in time, that's just not happening. That wins the ballads. I don't think that could qualify. Um, it, it, it sounds really dated. It doesn't sound uniquely Maltese at all. It sounds like it could be in the Danish national final or the Swedish, or I don't even think Norway picks songs like this anymore. Luxembourg would take a song like this. They're the leftover songs that just don't have enough of a spark, don't have enough originality. He's good though. I don't know, can he do a different type of song? He feels like he's very ballad orientated with his style of singing and he likes singing these big long notes. I don't know if he feels comfortable in other styles of music. I would like Ryan to go at some point in the future because uh, he's got a really strong voice. I think his look is cool. Okay, so song 11 is Sarah Benici and she's saying, wanna know my secret bang? I think I have seen this before. I think she was one of the first performers. That you got me. Very that you show got tunes me. beginning. Ooh, that's a nice like a bassy beat. Definitely something to get on board with. Okay, I think she's had a pretty good construction the first. Oh, oh yeah. That's kind of nice and light. Okay. Yeah, this has got a bit of spice, a bit of something to it. I like that lyric, cherry on top, something about cinnamon, just a little bit different. And imagine now we're gonna have dance. She needs dancers, she needs people, four guys kind of worshipping her. What? 
cool. Oh, she's actually doing a dance break. Oh, this is a good dance break as well. And she's still holding the mic, so that's tough. Yeah. Her dance break's gonna be good. That's the kind of energy you need from a dance break. Oh, second dance break. <laughs> okay, she's lost energy now. She's tired. This is what you need to give your mic away to do these dance breaks and then get it given back to you like Chanel. Or go Britney mic. Okay, big nose. Mm. Okay. This is fun though. It's got a bit of a spirit to it. Ooh. This is a nice bit now. That's a fun quirky bit. I like a little bit more production again. Like a revamp if this was to win. Yeah, I can definitely see all the girly buff stands getting behind this. Yeah, some of her big no things just aren't really working. Maybe just pick, needs to pick some different ad-libs. But that was fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing her full dance break. I thought the kind of preview that we got of it was good. Okay, I missed a song and that was Yanville saying man. Oh, uh, Yanville, want to know my secret bang? Let's see. Is this the magic ballad? Oh, no, maybe it's not. What an unusual beginning. Oh, I love a cringy beginning. That sounds like a <laughs> shuttle, like space launch announcement. <laughs> it's like, it's, a, it's, I don't know if it crosses that line from cringe into uncomfortable. I think I've seen this before. Yeah, this is just from another generation. It just feels like this is a song from the noughties or the nineties. Which would have done well, probably. It sounded like a current sound from the 90s or 90s. And it's not a ballad. It's something different. He's got leather pants on. I like that. Okay, we've got a jazzy trombone coming in. Which I... I hate. I can be your brother, your father, your son. It, I'm your man? It's slightly unusual mixing of the lyrics. Because I thought I'm your man was like, I'm gonna be your sexual partner. I can be your son. <laughs> I don't know, there's like a mix of meanings here. Hear my breath. Yeah, that sounds a bit sexual. Hear my breath, I'm your man. Oh, I kind of love how messy this is getting at the end. Yeah, this is proper messy at the end. Oh, he's got a nice note. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. I think he's mixing it up though. I'd rather have someone have a messy mixed up ending than someone who's just giving me a generic ballad. It's got something to it. It feels a bit special. I don't know, lyrically I don't understand what was going on. It sounded like he was like trying to be like an emotional support, but then he's also like, I'm gonna bang you as well. So <laughs> which is it? 12 songs. So the ones that stand out for me that I think have got a shot. So let's first talk about the ones I think could win. I think Matt Black is in with a chance of winning. I think uh, Ryan Hilly. He's got a chance of winning as well. He came second last year. I think he's got the strongest of the ballads. I think he won like one of X Factor, one of those shows as well. So I think he's got a bit of a fan base. I think that Mara and uh, Loop have a little bit of something in them as well. And then I liked Urba Serena as well. I think that girl group vibe is kind of curly and unique and they're singing in Maltese. So that could be something kind of new for Malta as well. We don't see that many girl groups in Eurovision. Who do I want to win? Matt Black. Uh, obviously I need to see the live performances and what's going to happen, but I'm imagine he's going to elevate and give really fun visuals. I just think it is the most enjoyable song. If, if we just look at like pure entertainment, and of course ballads can be entertaining. I, I don't dislike ballads by the way, like Rapunzel Moi is my favourite Eurovision song ever. That's a ballad. But I like ballads when they're like beautiful melodies, got something unique, they've got some beautiful instrumentation or some construction in them, and Maltese ballads tend to be unbelievably formulaic like really 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 the most formulaic no nobody in malta has found like a their unique modern sound in writing ballads yet i hope it comes in the future that'd be great it feels like clinging on to the 90s and the noughties when they came second twice with female ballads that's what that's what it sounds like to me in the last place we have yanville who i just saw okay <laughs> not just me who was confused about what that was about gratitude in 11th we have Haley in 10th nathan in 9th who was the nathan oh that was the ghost guy Okay, I forgot the song. Okay, not a great sign. Gail in eighth, Matt Black in seventh. Wow, <laughs> okay. So that's not gonna win, according to the fandom at all. In sixth, we have Miriana Conte. 
that was the Venom song. Fifth, Sao Bonici, which was Loop. Fourth, Lisa Gauci, that was the Breathe song. Third, Ryan Hilly. Second, so yeah, I had a feeling that he was gonna be pretty up pretty high. Second, we have Denise. And then in first, we have Urba. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, so people are liking the female group. I'm very okay with Urba winning. I thought that they've got something new. They need to bring up the energy and they need costumes and they need more fun. But there's been so much time since these live shows. I think these live shows were kind of late November. So they've had loads of times. They've got two months. So hopefully they've got great costumes, a couple of backup dancers, much better choreography. So yeah, I didn't realize that this was so popular, but I'm totally okay with, with Malta choosing this. And I do think it's something kind of new and fresh. They're singing in Maltese. That's really super cute. I love that as well. So I'm not mad on Ryan Healy going. I just don't think that's got a shot. I, I would like Malta to go with something that I feel like has a possibility of qualifying them. Even if it doesn't do great in the final, I just, I feel like Malta's put a lot of effort into their national final in the last two years. Like they're trying to develop their songwriting industry and two qualifications in a row kind of feels like a little bit of a, a slap in the face to the work that's being put on behind the scenes. So I would like to see something competitive go. I'm confident though that Malta's going to choose whatever looks best on stage. Relatively confident. Okay, so it seems like it's going to be between Urban and Denise. Let's see if we've got any odds. I still want Matt back to go, by the way, sorry. Okay, so I'm just looking at the odds now. These are the odds at the moment in time that I'm looking at them. And Matt Black is a heavy favorite, so that's a little bit surprising that he's got very, very short odds. It's only with one site, so that could be that someone's put like a big bet on him. That doesn't maybe represent like what everyone's thinking, but he's much lower down in the community app than I thought, so I don't feel like it's that definite that he's going to win. Ryan Healy in second, I get that. I feel like it's got that quality. If if there's a jury in the final, I think they're going to get a lot of points. So Urba, the fan favorites are in third. Fourth is Denise Mara, fifth, Serbonici Loop. Okay, so kind of an overlap there in who the name people I was mentioning. So yeah, at this point in time, the bookies say Matt Black, but it's only one website. I wouldn't put too much weight on that. I think it's really come, gonna come to the live performances and then we'll get a better idea of who is really delivering a, a show that can get attention and qualify, no matter what semi or half their Malta are put into. Let's have a look at my final top 12. Okay, what did you think about Malta's national final? Who's your favorite? Who do you want to win? Who do you think will win? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to Suzanne for supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. No new donations on PayPal, but you can support the channel there as well. I'll leave links in the description. Of course, thank you to all my patrons all over the world for patronizing my channel. On my Patreon, you can find the original audio when my videos get copyrighted. Plus, you can be part of my Eurovision Scorebook group. You get some early releases of some videos, some bonus videos, and some updates about future videos. You can also do a free trial, so go check that out if you're a fan of the channel. But as always, thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like, maybe sharing the video, and I hope to see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.